I, I'm good. I'm good. LTC, look at the party and include your audio into the. Roger that, Colonel. I'm included. All right. So one sec. Right. Yeah, I'm good to go. Yep, I'm golden. Before I can even put the link in uh, on Twitter, I have to go, wait a fucking wait for a damn ad finish. Oh, good. Uh, you know I'm dry. I just want to let you know, Squid, a little backstory here. I'm driving three hours out of town right now, so I don't have access to much other than just memory. So that's cool. Yeah, um, I mean. If anybody wants to say anything we've said, I, you know, for the record, um, probably about 80% of everything we talk about tonight will either be documented or other people will, uh, you know, remember these times and kind of agree or, you know, maybe disagree. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, we don't like to make accusations without having solid prevalent, so... I got you. I'm probably going to sound like a lost 80-year-old who needs another fifth jack, like Rayford on John Boy and Billy. you guys are and but again thank you guys for taking time to start out for the first episode of Milson bedtime stories which is again as I explained it to you guys is a uh, what the hell is the word I'm looking for the idea came from the idea of Milson bedtime stories came from violent but true best time bedtime stories which you can catch on Grunt Style's YouTube channel will include a link in the description below um, on YouTube. But like I, stated, like I stated on Twitter, we allowed you guys to choose a topic for tonight. And if Colonel, if you want to kick us off, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Colonel Exotic with the Fourth Infantry Division. Uh, also got LTC Lurch in the party here with us. Uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, not really our gig, but I uh, I appreciate the time to go over some history since we both have a minute tonight. Um, essentially, like you said, you know, Milton bedtime stories. I mean, we're going to be talking about the past, about uh, you know, recent past, uh, the, the far past. I mean, it's going to be. Just a little bit of anything and everything, but the main topic I think would be, you know, Milsom community stands now and, you know, how we personally feel about it. I think that would be a good way to start the session off. And then, uh, you know, obviously, Squid, if you have any questions going through the process, feel free to, you know, fire away. Uh, same with you, LTC. If you've got anything to add, feel free to just dab in whenever. You know, no, there's no. You know, that's that's kind of where I, I feel we should start. So. All right. Yeah, with that being said, I mean, community as of right this second, I, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's taking a swirly in the toilet right now is, is what it seems like. Um, there's a lot of teams that, that, uh, kind of aren't really doing exactly what it, you know what in itself states that is to simulate a military um, I personally I see a lot of it to where it kind of irks both myself and LTC and then many members of our team and you know, we kind of when we when we work our asses off to you know try to simulate 
again, we're Fourth Infantry Division. It it kind of irks us and makes us feel a certain way when other people are acting out or you know fighting in an unhonorable way, dishonorable way. I apologize, and uh, that's where you know we kind of draw the line, and that's why we say and do what we do as far as you know. Well, well let me let me backtrack for a second. Fourth ID has this reputation of we like to stick our nose in everybody's business. And to an extent, it's correct. On the flip side, it's 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 realistic. I mean, you know, a lot of people complain about the community chat and how ridiculous it is and, you know, how the community has turned into this big old pit of cancer. Well, the problem is, is people put information in that chat. As soon as that happens, it becomes public information. And at that point, you basically opened up a can of worms that you probably shouldn't have in the first place. But just like, um, just like how um, with uh, Colonel Faticus from 101A did with those little screenshots of him and Crow, and he actually put an address without covering it up in a screenshot and post it in the community. Yeah, I mean precisely. That's that's textbook a uh, no-no. That's not you know that's. And it happens, it's not, you know, even though my, my taste for both of those individuals is kind of sour at the moment, um, you know, there's many scenarios where something very similar would happen and it causes conflict. So, but yeah, I mean, you, you release a public statement in that chat, you've got 147 individuals, approximately 50 teams looking at it. And if they want to give you their opinion on it, well... They deserve every right because you didn't put it out to the whole, you know, the public. So at that point, it's your problem. But yeah, uh, that's... Colonel, if you don't mind, I, I believe that the original place that he put his information out was the uh, Temple of the War, uh, Temple of War Turtle Chat, or one of those other. Ch- uh, came back to the community chat with the address information blotted out, and then it was tried to used against other people and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, to go along with what you're saying, uh, yeah, any anything, any information you provide, uh, once you provide it, I mean, you can't really fault other people for, for passing it around. I mean, be advisable, but it wouldn't have been possible had you not provided it in the first place. So. Exactly. So, but yeah, I mean, that just, again, yeah, that kind of leads into where I was going with the whole, you know, how, how we personally feel about the community. I, I think it's gotten, it's had its ups and downs. I mean, it's, been good it's been bad um it's been worse it's been better i think when i first doing milsim a very long time ago uh, along with many others uh, that have come and gone some some i think there's a very few that i know from when i started that are still around doing milsim but uh, when i first started the milsim community was actually uh, about 10 to 15 teams that i knew of personally and it was nothing like it is now. And there's a few reasons that I can actually state that. One, line chat, kick, discord, all these other apps that we use now weren't really a thing in 2010, 2011. When I, I, I started in 2000, 2011. So social media apps like line chat and discord and all that, those weren't a thing. It was just everything was through parties. It was mostly, you know, oh, fuck you, fuck this, fuck that, we're fighting, and then that's that. Well, now it's turned into a lot of people arguing um, more talk than fight, which, you know, is open for discussion, which essentially looks ridiculous, which, you know, I I can't say that I haven't partaken in it myself. I have, absolutely. Um, But on on the flip side, you know, I'm not afraid to get down and fight. You know, that's one of the things that we're known for. Yes, very political. We like to make sure things are handled in a specific way. But uh, we also like to make sure that we're still fighting, you know, just as much to balance that out. All right. Um, Any hopes for the new Dolphin community that just started up? Battlefield 5? <laughs> Is there hope for it? Yeah, there's always hope. There's always been hope for Battlefield 4. Um, 
I mean, uh, you know, it's just, it really depends on who you ask, I guess. You know, I, me personally, and, and I, you know, me and LTC, I, I can speak for him partially because we talk on a consistent basis. He's told me on many occasions how he feels. Um, you know, we both agree that there's a lot of problems and there's a lot of teams that I wouldn't necessarily consider to be, uh, you know, quote unquote, Milsim. 100%, you know, not not to their best ability. Um, but there's always hope to help teams improve, and that's where some people don't, they don't have that faith, they don't have that respect or that common decency of, you know, hey, everybody starts somewhere, okay? You don't teach somebody something new by harassing them or, you know, beating them into the ground. Not sometimes, everybody's different, everybody learns a different way. Sometimes that is what you have to do. I mean, no doubt about it. Sometimes you do have to beat the shit out of somebody until they understand. I mean, that's just, you know, everybody is different. But on the flip side, you know, if somebody makes a minor mistake or uses the wrong loadout, wrong weapon, they shouldn't be criticized and ridiculed for, you know, two, three weeks straight just because you're a fucking asshole and you know better than they don't. That's the difference. You got to know when to be an asshole and when to, you know, just calmly, collectively say, "Hey, you know, we've seen this in the field. According to, you know, what we do, this is incorrect. Just wanted to let you know, good fight. You know, you don't have to blow a gasket to clear war over a loadout. That would be ridiculous." Has any team done that before? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Shit, I... <laughs> I, think, I think every team has done that at some point, even ourselves. Uh, it was a learning experience for us. Um, and I, you know, me personally, like I said, you know, fourth... I, I, I told you earlier before we got on the stream, fourth ID is far from perfect. And that's, that's why we continue to improve. We strive to improve at all times. So yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of teams. That, I, I can't even think of a team that hasn't done that. Everybody has. It's most times, it's because, oh, I don't like so-and-so, or oh, they did me wrong, or oh, they left my team and took five guys with them, so I'm gonna harass them. You know, I, I, like I said, we have done the same thing. Um, sometimes to teach a lesson, sometimes out of pure spite for that individual, sometimes it's just clearly, you know, well, Maybe, you know, maybe they need to learn a lesson. And in itself, that teaches you how to, you know, control yourself in the future. If you, if you learn from your mistake, like I said, simple loadout or a team playing more of a, a pub style game rather than a Milsim game in a Milsim server. I mean, those are things that you can teach. Even, even your worst of enemies, you can teach them by be killing them with kindness. You can do it. I've done it millions of times. You have to be confident, you have to be in the party, you have to be in their ass, but you have to be in their ass in a, in a nice way. You can't be rough riding them, because that's, that's, that's not what most leaders like, is to be belittled in front of their men. You have to calmly and collectively teach them. Um, and that's why, you know, we, we've stated it multiple times, you know, I agree with, after so many times, yeah, okay, it's time to just, you know, this guy can't be taught unless we try a different method, which in that case, you know, it's time to, it's time to pound them out a couple times so they get the point. You know, try to try our best to cripple their team and teach them that, you know, you're doing this wrong. So, <clears throat> that's, I mean, that's, like I said, that's all in itself, just a couple different things that we have seen. And I, yeah, there's, to answer your question, yes, a lot of teams do that. I mean, if you want me to start naming them might as well just name every team in Milson because it's that's probably about right. Soldiers, we have lost our yeah. um, I was gonna ask something else, but, um, but if you want to go ahead and continue with the uh, stories, you can. Um, oh. <clears throat> okay, I just lost the whole train of thought right there. 
It's all right, Squid. Now, Lurks, I've seen, um... Go ahead. I, I, seen, I seen your thing in the Discord server earlier. The chasing them. I've got to admit, that was, that was pretty funny. Which time? Uh, I, was, I looked at it from four or three something. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I, I meant I meant with your currents, not the actual time. My apologies. I'm driving right now, oh, so um, it's a little What you got? I don't know. It was today, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, what I was trying to explain to him was that the same fuck up that he made back when he tried to fuck over the community with Tracer is the same fuck up he's making now. Um, trying to say, you know, here's this limit on the left, here's this limit on the right, here's the mainstream definition of Milsim. If you go outside either of these, uh, you're considered not Milsim, blah, 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 blah. And, and the, the biggest problem that he doesn't get is that most people actually agree with him on the definition of Milsim. Maybe not in his most latest version of it, or perversion of it, but in the basic definition of Milsim, uh, which is to simulate the unit that you've chosen to represent, the real life unit you've chosen to represent, to simulate the best of your ability on the Xbox within the game that you're simulating it. Um, and most people accept that definition with open arms. They don't accept all the other shit that he tries to bring in. Especially, you know, draw a line in the sand over here, draw a line in the sand over there, you know, don't cross this, don't cross that. The, the biggest problem people have, people as in, I don't speak for everyone in the community, but in my observations, the biggest problem people have is that who's holding the stick drawing the line? Who gets to draw the lines? He always wants to be the damn stick holder. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. That's the problem. Um, there was two reasons, you know, why uh, we started looking at possibly talking to other units about joining a chat. And one thing, observation that I had coming up in the Milson when I, I've always been in the fourth as a private right on up, you know, to now. And... When I first started getting into running operations with other units, I learned something real fast. Uh, some units you could speak on civil terms regardless of what type of shit happened in the engagement. Uh, some units you could you could never speak on civil terms regardless of what happened in the engagement. Uh, some units, it fluctuated. If they won, they were happy. Uh, if they lost, uh, they were sour. Um, which is, some of that's human nature for people, but at the same time, if you're representing the officers of the military, you know, you ought to be able to speak to people, you know, in, in a, a civil fashion, you know, because at the end of the day, we're just here doing the best we can, whether we're the aggressor, the defender, the losing party, the winning party, it doesn't matter, you know. Um, I don't ever want to meet a lieutenant colonel of the 4th in real life tell him that I'm having fun on this little hobby on a video game and then him you know have something uh, something to say to me that's a disappointment you know for something I did you know because then I'm going to feel like well damn I don't even need to wear the fourth tag as this role play online I don't, I don't deserve my fucking tag you know if I can't stand up for the same values um you know, the same level of integrity, uh, same level of professionalism. I mean, within good reason, don't get me wrong. This is a video game online, but just say it, you know, to the best of my ability, then I don't deserve to wear the fucking tag, no matter what anybody says. And what I'm trying to get at is, is a certain level of civility and mutual respect um, that we should all share, a certain amount of integrity, you know, that we should strive for. And during my coming up in the fourth seeing all of this uh how milson was conducted i went to colonel and our founder at the time and i said to them because they trained me um, online is a totally different environment 
you can't colonel always tells me you can't hold people responsible like you can in real life because it's voluntary they can turn off their xbox they can you know uh remove their little chat app they can it's completely voluntary so when you're leading people and guiding people and advising people um, online you have to take a completely different approach and i said but how do we how do i do that how do i how do i prove like even internally in the force how do i prove that i followed your orders but yet this person didn't uh, follow mine and so i'm in the clear for doing my job and now i have to go hold them accountable and colonel exotic said well take a screenshot of you doing exactly what i ordered you to do and send it to me. you know and i'm gonna be straight with you squid i didn't know shit about the military i didn't know shit about milsim i i knew nothing other than i had bought this battlefield game um until i ran into a sergeant of the fourth who recruited me and uh joke with colonel all the time when i do something good i say ah yeah yeah it's your fault you trained me and he always says no you brought some good stuff to the table but the truth is him and uh, the founder of the force trained me on everything. And the reason why my stories are long-winded is because that's basically what I brought to the table. I talk too much. Let me get back around to the point. So screenshots provided me a way to show, uh, to back up my word. And I don't have a reason to lie. I don't gain anything. And... The only thing that really I saw that got promoted was integrity in our own unit, you know, professionalism in our own unit, uh, uh, the weeding out of, you know, undesirable characters in our own unit. Um, and the more and more and more uh, we push certain core values that the real life military has inside the fourth, uh, we saw the benefits it had for our unit. And once we had gotten the fourth to the point where, you know, numbers, it's not about numbers, but I'm saying once we had grown significantly, once we had a good staff in place, once things were pretty well set for that point in time, I said, hey, uh, you know, how can we share this? Well, what I've learned, you know, how can I share this? It's not fair um, that I see all this dishonesty, all this manipulation all this deceit all these lies you know all this brainwashing all this bs all this cheating um in the community you know why can't we just do milsim why can't we just come together uh have an engagement right have some sort of uh agreement on roe or ripped it off or maybe it's just a raid you know maybe it's just a little skirmish who knows whatever but why can't we just come together fight at the end, just the discrepancies, like they call it an AR, right? And uh, and go on, GG and move. You know, why can't we just do that? And Colonel says, well, we can, you know, but sometimes other units just want to cause issues. And I'm like, but why? I didn't understand it because I was brand new. And uh, Colonel said, because it's what they do. Because if they can get this unit, they're mad at this unit, then those units can fight each other, they can destroy each other, break each other down, and when the team disbands, this other team on the outside can absorb all the loose members. And that's how we witnessed absorption, and I'm just not for it. And I said, well, how come they can get away with it, Colonel? Why can they get away with it? And Colonel said, well, TC, unfortunately, there's no accountability. He said, there's no accountability. He said, people can just, it's he said, she said. Those were his words. He said, she said. And one day I was yeah, sitting there. Yeah, it seems like a lot of that still happens nowadays. That's true. But at that moment, it was only party chat. And I said, well, I got an idea, Colonel. And he said, what's that? I said, what if, what if I set up a chat and we just make a rule that it's all about friendly engagement? That's it. It's only for to help teams. I was like, granted, we can only help so many teams. But if we get enough units you know, on board doing this, same thing we're doing then the community can change for the better and so the jto chat was created um when our founder was going to retire he said maintain our good relations with field team as we promised um and uh continue to run the fourth and all its values like it is and uh and i got colonel exotic's number from him and 
I asked him before he retired, I said, hey, uh, remember that chat I wanted to start? Can I start it? And he said, yeah, you can do it. Try it and do it. And so we started it. And we didn't want anything for it. And I don't ever want anybody to say, you know, Lurch did this or the fourth did that. Or it, It's not about that. It's about how, what can we do, we, we as each individual unit, not just the fourth, but what can we do to better the community that we operate in? You know, and so we tried the JTO chat. It started out us and then a couple more teams and 14 teams and 31 teams. And then it went up to approximately the same amount that's in the line community, you know. Now there's actually more teams. Well, I just did a purge uh, for no comps people. But at, at a lot of times there was more teams in the JTO chat than there was in the community chat because it was a less hostile environment. They could come together, schedule an engagement, you know, and go at it and then talk sensibly and move on, you know. Um, and to this day, we've never had a major issue out of that chat, which is a blessing. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it's not because of us. It's because the teams participating are willingly doing so, you know, just for their love of Milton. There's no bragging rights in a JTO. It's joint training. You know, it's for that purpose. Um, and there's a hostile side to Milton too. So, the community chat was created. And there's a screenshot that gets posted in there once every so often, like once a month, once every two, three months, whenever the time is right. There's a screenshot in there that reminds people of the purpose of that chat. Xbox party limits you to what, Squid? How many? 10, 15, 16? What is it? Um, I think I've seen, but biggest I've seen is about 13, I think. Yeah, about 13. Yeah, at one time it was like 8 or 10 or something. I don't remember. Like, they have they upped it, but it used to be a, a lower number. Let's say 10 teams. Now, if you've got two or three teams who are friends, right? Two or three other teams who are friends with each other and they're at odds with each other and you've got six teams in a party at each other's throat and one or two third party bystanders trying to mediate, how hectic is that? It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty hectic. It's ridiculous. Just to play the middle, man. Yeah, just to play the... How about let's take turns talking? Remember that old thing here? You're holding the stick now? <laughs> You're holding the talking <laughs> stick. Are you kidding me? I didn't have Boy Scouts. Yeah, but are you kidding me? Like, I heard that at a party <laughs> once, and I'm like, I'm doing what? The fuck is that? So what I realized was is, why don't we just throw them all in a chat? Because then there's no talking over the top of each other. There's no... don't have a problem with that. I can send a text. You can send a text. Everybody can read it. Oh, guess what? Now everything's documented. Oh, wait a minute. You mean I have to be careful what I say because it's not like you're too drunk to remember tomorrow. You know, it's not like I said this to Jim, but this to Bob, but this to Bill. And really, I said all of that just to get over here at Steve, you know, in a certain kind of way. You know, people can still play the politics game. And still, you know, play their games and do all that stuff. But at the same time, it brings accountability to Milsim. And, and there's pros and cons of that, okay? It also brings self-awareness to the participants of the chat. Because before, I only knew, I'll give you an example, KSM, way back in the day. I asked Colonel, Colonel, why they got all these flares on their guns? They were running around fire, Firestorm, middle of the day, flares on sniper rifles, flares on rifles, flares on everything. It was ridiculous. And I, I couldn't understand it. I was like, what's going on? And he's like, this is uh, basically a meme team. That's not what words he used back then, but that's the gist of what he was saying. He said, but don't worry about it. We're just going to try to beat him anyway. And sometimes we would, and sometimes we didn't. But we fought him anyway, you know. And what I realized is that, okay, we only knew about that one team that was like that because we only encountered them in our server or in their server if we raided them. So we were aware of one meme team. But when you put almost the entire community into one chat, uh, you immediately become aware of everything that everyone posts at all times. So it made the community more self-aware and people say, oh, well, the, the chat this, the chat that, the community's shit. No, no, the community was already shit. You just weren't aware of it. And so in my opinion, the chat has helped bring respect for veteran
talking yeah, like that. Cut out there. Uh, yeah, my, my navigation is talking, man. That's why I cut out. I stopped talking so I could continue to drive to Myrtle Beach. All right. Um, so what I'm saying is, is with that accountability and with that awareness, um, it, you know, it, it it basically made the community aware of itself. So then it was up to the community, pass or fail. Either fix yourself or don't. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I've seen in my time there, I've seen uh, simulation accuracy uh, come back around to being a, a good priority. Okay. I remember years ago uh, when the chat first started, oh, man, everybody would cry and bitch and moan and send screenshots of every last little gun and load out and talk shit and talk shit and talk shit. But then the veterans got together, right, and came up with all these loadout lists and, and you know, really put simulation accuracy back as a as a core value of Milson, you know. And then honoring and respecting the military, you know. It took a while, but eventually that came back as a top priority for participants of the chat. So you got, you know, honoring the military, simulation accuracy, mutual respect, specialism, all those core values started coming back around. Now, it might have took a year or two, but I've, I've watched it happen. Because when I first joined Externals, man, I, Colonel can tell you, I was not, I was no, I was nowhere near the, 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 I guess the word, you know, representative or, you know, nowhere near the, 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 you know, public affairs type officer that I am now, or, you know, have become. Damn. Ugh. Right. Yes. I remember, um, I think when I started, it was just one uh, community just went to fucking lie, because I remember someone had, like, a group chat on kick. Didn't people were asking, hey, you got lying or some shit? Right. That, like, I only knew lying, because that was, like, a big social media thing back in Japan. Oh, okay. Like, that's the only way I knew about it, so I just... I typed it in and fucking got that shit set, um, set up. And I was surprised it was even in... Like, you even get that shit here. Because I thought it was just Japan, not in the U.S. at all. Well, most of the stickers, if you look at the authors and types of stickers they are, even the, the comic book character stuff, a lot of that stuff's generic because it is mostly all based overseas. But... The thing about it was, uh, Colonel searched for an app, um, found one he liked, picked it, and it was just random, and, and I, I mean, I say I grew up in the fourth, it's just the way I put it, but I grew up in the fourth, so this is all I know, you know, um, but it, 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 it doesn't really matter to me whether it's kick, line, uh, discord, you know, whatever, communication is communication, and a lot of times people forget that, and, it was very awkward the first time I heard a young guy say about Milsim, "Hey, um, I want to, I want to get in the community. Are you a mod?" And and I've I've got line chat, and so there was some random kid coming up through high school looking to do Milsim, wanting to be official Milsim because he got into a line chat, and I had to explain to him, <laughs> "I'm not joking, man. I'm not joking." I had to explain to him, and this has happened more than once. I had to explain to him, dude, if you have five members you know a squad if you have a squad of guys and you have a server you're official bro you don't need any justification any validation you don't need anything you don't need any chats you don't need any apps all you need is your xbox five guys who claim to be on your team you know get your tags you know so you can represent you know and and your server it's all you need you need a squad and a server with tags there you go you're official bro the chat is just a comp chat. That's all it is. Whether you're emailing other units, whether you're sending a message on Xbox, whether you're uh, Xbox party with them, you know, no matter what you're doing, uh, you're communicating. And, and then some people want to, when they start losing the, de the, the debates and stuff, oh, you, oh, you want to make this political, like it's some big problem. No, I'm sorry. Anytime you're talking to another unit, Oh, that's foreign affairs, bro. <laughs> anytime, anytime you're talking to another unit, that's a diplomatic conversation. Is it not? Is it not foreign policy? 
It is? Right. So whether I'm sending you one Xbox message that says, you know, please remove so and so, he's not on our and he's not from our team. You know, that's a diplomatic conversation. Am I being political? Well yeah. Is it a negative thing? No. It's just me talking to you and I'm in a different unit. Get the fuck over it, bitch. <laughs> you know? Alright. I'm serious, man. But if you look at the world society and then you look at people's online behavior, it's nothing more than an extension of that. Here, let me play victim so I can now go on the offense against you for you being the guy who offended me. Wah, wah, wah. Right. Anyway, we're All getting right. a little too deep in the, you know, philosophical and psychological Yeah, I think, that, I think that's for another episode. <laughs> Well, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, community, the community and everyone always loves it when you come on board. This is actually the first time we actually got you can, uh, your voice connected on uh, Twitch. Um, I have a new Xbox now, so I do have that feature. Um, on my old Xbox, something was off on my setting. Ah. But third time, third time's a charm, man. But... We always look forward to more of the most and bedtime stories from you guys. Honestly, uh, I'd like I'd like uh, a specific topic because I mean it's obvious I have a tendency to ramble, so um, I could you know focus. Yeah, we can we can get you a uh, specific topic next episode. Um, <laughs> a shout out to Hoplite for suggesting this idea. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you I was something. Just drinking. I was was, this Go whole ahead. idea was like one big. This whole thing was like one big drinking idea. Oh yeah. He he sent it to me, and I was happened to be down in beers, and yeah. I took one look at it, I was like, "Fuck it, let's do it." <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm we the board's never been the type to do any news media type stuff we're not into that type of stuff uh no no offense or disrespect it just wasn't really our cup of tea um honestly it wasn't until hop sent me that meme um that i actually felt honored enough or welcomed enough or you know just maybe in a good enough spot to do it uh, in a respectful way. Yeah. Um, those of you in the stream that are just joining us, uh, this stream will be up on YouTube here by tonight. And it will be posted on tw uh, Twitter, so that way you can take a look at it. And this will conclude episode one of Nelson Bedtime Stories with Lurch. I hope and to uh, improve upon those episodes as we move along. Like I said, I'm still driving it down. That's that's fine. Um, yeah, we'll definitely get you uh, for next episode. We'll get you a uh, topic of discussion. That way, it's not just like a bunch of ramble and all that jazz. <laughs> that's right. I want to uh, since you're doing shout outs. Right. Are we still recording or no? Uh, yeah, we're still recording. I want to give a shout out to uh, four veterans that I've met in my time in Millsim. Um, I've met more than that, okay? And I don't want to take anything away from anyone that I don't mention. But there are four particular veterans that have made a huge impact um, on me in Millsim and in real life. Uh, they are uh, Sergeant First Class Grumpa, uh, Lieutenant Nemesis Empire, uh, Lieutenant Jarhead Actual and uh, Captain Rage Fort's ID. Uh, those four gentlemen are, uh, if they could be any closer brothers to me than my real life brother, I would say that they're right there, right up underneath him, only because obviously this is no sin that my brother's real life, but you get what I'm saying. And i uh, got nothing but mad respect for those gentlemen. Um, they're a big reason why I'm still doing no sin. All right, and before we cut that off for tonight, I got one more thing to say. 
I guess some st shit we'll be watching on Saturday. Uh, go Navy, beat Army. Ah! And with that, <laughs> oh, bullshit. We're cutting out.